Hey guys, hello, how are you doing today? Or tonight rather, it just depends. It just depends on where you are in the world and what time it is. I hope you all are doing pretty good. I am back with another video. So welcome to my channel. Welcome to A Little Sprinkle. I am your host, Who? Sprinko and today video I have um the worst foods in America and seven rare signs you have high spiritual intelligence so um let's just jump right into it real fast you know what I'm saying um I wanted to talk to you guys about other things as well but we're gonna get into this real fast okay so bear with me let me get it pulled up if you are new to my channel please subscribe go ahead and subscribe to the channel go ahead and like this video because i often forget to tell you guys to like the video before i end the video so i'm making sure i i tell y'all now okay so 17 of the worst junk foods you can buy in america y'all are y'all ready to talk about it or read about it and get into it? Let's do it. Okay, so this was posted 20 hours ago, okay? Everyone wants to eat healthier, but that is much harder than we think, especially when these 17 junk foods taste so good. But you need to resist. These are some of the worst food choices in the whole country. You need to avoid them as much as possible. Your body will thank you for it. So first up, we got Nutella. Y'all, how about I thought Nutella was healthy, but I guess it isn't, okay? Um, while Nutella is made with healthy hazelnut, the spread itself is extremely processed and loaded with sugar and oil. The nutritional benefits of the nuts are negated by the 21 grams of sugar and just two tablespoons of Nutella. Child. Arby's curly fries. Now, how many of y'all eat Arby's? I eat Arby's, but I haven't ate Arby's in some years now. So I don't know how that could pretty much, you know, go hand in hand with me. You know what I'm saying? But deep fried and delicious. Arby curly fries are a favorite for some people. You know what I'm saying? However, they pack. 650 calories, 35 grams of fat, and 77 grams of carbs in a large order. Consuming such high calorie and high fat junk food can lead to infl inflammation and heart disease. Store bought smoothies. I know you fucking lying. What? Not no store bought um smoothies huh chow you lying to me you gotta be lying to me because but child I guess they ain't lying to me you know what I'm saying while smoothies are supposed to be healthy store bought versions are often loaded with added sugars and artificial flavoring. Mm. Most aren't even made with real fruit, making them a poor choice for a snack. Child, I'm guilty of number four. Mm -mm -mm. I'm guilty. I'm guilty of this one, child. I'm guilty of it. Okay. Here we go. This is a little better. This ain't how I want it, but it's, it's up here now. Okay. So, rice a cheddar, broccoli, 
child. Instant rice dishes like rice around each other broccoli flavor contain partially hygienated palm oil and 790 milligrams of sodium per serving. This high sodium content can contribute to heart issues and other health problems. Who ain't eating this no more? I'm not going to say I'm not going to eat it, but I'm going to try my best not to eat it because 790 milligrams of sodium, oh, for that little container, that's way too much sodium. That's like salt. Idolize salt. Pop-Tarts. Okay, so... In my household, my girls love Pop Tarts, but I'm not a real big fan of them. I will eat them, but I ain't that big of a fan of eating Pop Tarts. Pop Tarts are convenient, but packed with highly processed ingredients, including soybean oil and refined flour. Two frosted strawberry Pop-Tarts contain 400 calories, 76 grams of carbs, and only four grams of protein, making them not only a poor breakfast choice, but a junk food choice overall. Mm, mm, mm. Number six. Now, I knew this one was on there, but people get so addicted, but I... I don't eat a lot of spicy and hot stuff. Whew, excuse me, you guys. I don't eat a lot of hot and spicy stuff, but, you know, I'm not even going to lie. I will eat this stuff. Now, it, it's very rare. Can y'all even see me, child? It's very rare that you're going to see me eating this stuff, but I do eat hot and spicy, but very, very rare. Let's see what, what they're talking about. These snacks may be tasty, but they lack fiber and protein, making them unsatisfying. Each serving contains 310 milligrams of sodium, which can quickly add up and contribute to high blood pressure. Child, that's what I'm trying to get away from. Number seven, Popeye's chicken tenders. Child. We don't have a Popeyes in my town, but every once in a while I eat Popeyes. But not the chicken tenders, but I do eat Popeyes. Popeyes handcrafted chicken tenders are deep fried and contain trans fats, which are linked to inflammation and heart disease. A three piece serving contains 340 calories and 26 grams of carbs. Number eight, Frappuccinos. Yeah, I used to love me a Frappuccino when I was younger in my 20s. You couldn't tell me nothing. I wouldn't even go. I ain't never really just been to Starbucks. I've been there like once or twice. But I would go to the store and buy my own to make it home. Child. Whew. Excuse me, y'all. So a grand, a grande Starbucks white chocolate mocha frappuccino contains about 520 calories, 64 of which are from sugar. Consuming such a high sugar drink can lead to weight gain and doesn't satisfy hunger, making it a prime junk food. Mm. Bugles nacho cheese. Child, I just ate some of these yesterday. A little bag, but I didn't know. Is it Lay's brand? Y'all, uh, I'm tired. I'm trying to stay up. It's 4, 4, 4, 4.42 a.m. Anyway, number nine, Bugles Nacho Cheese Snacks contain six grams of unsaturated fat per serving, almost half 
the recommended daily limit, child. They are also low in fiber and protein leaving you feeling hungry shortly after eating them. Child show ate that yesterday. The the orange bag and the little bag. And yes, I was still hungry. Dunkin' Donuts glazed jelly sticks. I don't eat that. Do y'all eat that? This deep fried pastry has 480 calories and is high and refined flour and sugar. It also contains trans fat, making it one of the worst donut choices for your health. Donuts themselves are already a junk food, but Dunkin' takes the cake for a worse choice. Chow. Number 11, Kraft White Cheddar Pasta Shells. Oh, they got jalapeno. Mm. With 59 grams of carbs and only 2 grams of fiber, Kraft white cheddar pasta shells can spike your blood sugar. They also contain 670 milligrams of sodium per serving, which is from any ideal meal choice. Child number 12, Twinkies. Now, I ain't big on eating Twinkies because it's the cream is to me it'd be too much cream, but some people like Twinkies. I will eat a Twinkie. I can't eat both in a pack if it to come with two in a pack. Well, back in the day, I think they did come with two in a pack, but nowadays I think they just come with one in a pack. Grandfather of junk food. Twinkies are fluffy, cream-filled cakes packed with preservatives, artificial flavoring, sugars, and saturated fats. Their long shelf life is due to these preservatives, making them a terrible choice for your body. What? Number 13, vegetable rice blends. Frozen vegetable rice blends often contain more unhealthy ingredients than actual vegetables. They are high in sodium and artery clogging saturated fats making them a poor choice for a healthy diet. Mmm, y'all better learn me some. Corn dogs, number 14. Now, y'all, I I will eat a corn dog, but I don't really care for corn dogs because I don't like right under the bread. It's like gooey. Like, I don't like it. Anyway, this one should be obvious. Corn dogs are deep fried and contain processed meat and have been linked to an increased risk of colon cancer and heart disease. They are not a healthy snack or food choice in any form. Y'all, I actually got a box of mini corn dogs in my freezer. So, mm, mm, mm. Number 15, McDonald's Triple Thick Milkshake. Whew. Anything food with triple in the name should be a warning in itself. A large McDonald's Triple Thick Milkshake contains 1,100 calories and 193 grams of carbs, with 135 of them coming from sugar. The extremely high calorie and sugar content makes it one of the worst junk food choices on the menu. Child, now we can't eat none that's good for us. Oh, number 16, veggie straws. I just told my daughter that I think those are a healthy choice for her. And it didn't make it to number 16 on the list. We in trouble. We in real, real tr big trouble. Don't be fooled by the name and coloring on the bag. Veggie straws are highly processed and almost completely void of nutrients. They are not a healthier alternative to chips, despite their name. And are they spy junk food on this list? They are the spy junk food on the list. So what does that even mean? Spy junk food? 
Child, let's move on to number 17, hormonal, hormel, pepperoni. I don't buy pepperonis. I will eat them if it, if I get a pizza, but I'm not going to go out and buy this pork like this. Do they have beef pepperonis? I don't know, y'all, because I don't buy pepperonis. Now, I have in the past, and I end up throwing the whole pack away because I would never use them and they would go bad. Processed meats like Hormel pepperoni contains high level of sodium and preservatives, including sodium nitrate which is linked to several types of cancer. A serving contains 520 milligrams of sodium and six grams of saturated fat. Child. In conclusion, avoiding these 17 junk foods can significantly improve your overall health and well-being. While they may be tempting due to convenience or taste, the high levels of sugar, unhealthy fats, sodium, and artificial ingredients will lead to health issues like obesity, heart disease, and diabetes. Opting for more natural, unprocessed foods and making more informed food choices can help you maintain a healthier lifestyle. Okay, so y'all, what y'all think about this article? Do y'all think this was a good um, article to go over and read and talk about? What y'all think about it? Do y'all eat some of these foods that I just named that was on the list? And are you guys making healthier food choices or at least trying to, such as myself, like I'm trying to do? Or y'all just eat what the hell you feel like eating, okay? Now, this next article, y'all, I did not read any of it. We gonna read it together, okay? If it freaking loads up. This video is turning into, um, turning out to be way longer than I intended it to be. But seven signs seven rare signs you have high spiritual intelligence and see people's true colors y'all ready to get into this because people be thinking they know they just think they know and they don't be knowing but let's see what they talking about on here and if they got some uh, um good options or signs you know what i'm saying because um hold on y'all why is this got my head cut off i hope y'all can see me is my head cut off child okay there we go it don't look like my head cut off now but anyway let's get into this article Spiritual intelligence help you rise above what the material world has to offer. It allows you to access and enjoy the energy that isn't visible to other people. People with spiritual intelligence feel like they are a part of something so much bigger than themselves. It's an achievement everyone should aim for. But you may not even be aware that you possess these types of intelligence. Here are seven signs you may have high spiritual intelligence. Number one, you know that doing harm to others hurt you in the long run. Many people do harm to others for their own good. They think this is good for them and in the short term, and in the small picture, it may be. But in the long term and in the big picture, it's not. When you produce harm to others, two things happen. They are sad, which prevents them from doing good things and sending out good energy. And they are bitter, which causes them to do further bad things and send out bad energy. Since 
they're now less likely to do good things and more likely to do bad things. They would do bad things to others. Who will in turn be more prone to do bad things? And it keeps going in this cycle. Somewhere along the lines, it's going to come back to the person who started it. But you understand this because of your high spiritual intelligence. You understand that energy spreads. You understand that we are all one. And you understand that it comes back sooner or later. This is why you do good things, not just selflessly, but logically as well. Since you understand that in the bigger picture, you will reap the benefits. Y'all, I say talk about that a lot. It's, to me, that's karma. Mm -hmm. What you put out is going to come back. But basically, if, if you keep putting bad out, it's hurting one person and the other person is going to have that same bad energy that you hurt or put bad out towards or did wrong and they're going to hurt the next person. And the cycle just continues, which is all fucked up, if you ask me, because in the end, it makes a full circle and it comes back to the person who started it. So make sure you're doing good things, but that's sign number one. Sign number two, you believe in faith. Life exists in two very discreet pockets. There are events you can control to reduce your misery and increase your happiness here. Just do what it takes. It's simple, if not always easy, but then there are events you cannot control, otherwise known as what we call fate. How do you deal with fate, especially when it's bad? Do you hate it, reject it, deny it? Niache says that you should learn to love it. That's what a more fatty is. A more fatty. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but I hope I am. I'm learning something new. Not just an acceptance of fate, but a love of it. This makes sense because any event has several different consequences. Some good, some bad. When you learn to love fate, you bias yourself to look at the good consequences, not the bad. And that leads to happiness. Mm. Okay, I thought that they was going to go in a completely different direction with that. But okay, they didn't want to get too deep is what I'm saying. Okay. Number three, you feel overwhelmed by feelings of gratitude. Uh, 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 uh. People with high spiritual intelligence never feel the need to practice gratitude. And it's not because they haven't had their share of sufferings. Rather, it's because a lack of gratitude is a silly concept. Mm. Even though you, as a person with high spiritual intelligence, may have suffered, you have also been blessed by some truly wonderful things. In essence, gratitude overwhelms you, so you have never had to actually take time out to practice gratitude. No matter what or who we are, life is tough in one way or another. But no matter how different things get, we have more blessings than we can count. And all you need to do to develop high spiritual intelligence is to realize that and let the gratitude for those blessings overwhelm you. Mm, I need to take heed to that one. Number four, you have a deeply empathetic nature. Mm, mm, mm. Y'all, this is describing me all the way. Some people like to make others suffer. Some people don't care about other people's suffering. Some want other people's suffering to stop when they have caused it and they feel guilty. Okay. 
And then there are some people who have a strong inner urge to make other people's suffering go away. Um, um, irrespective of who or what has caused it. This type of person has high spiritual intelligence. Hmm. People who are empathetic in this way realize that all humans are one. And so they truly wish to stop others, other people's suffering. Child, I'm, I do that. I'm always trying to make things better, make people feel better. Um, Because, I, again, I tell you, I don't want y'all to go through what I've been through or make the decisions that I made. So I share with y'all a lot about the bad decisions that I've made in life. But let's carry on. You know what lies at the core of evil people. That's number five. On the surface, yes, people might seem evil. They might do truly horrendous things to certify their evilness. However, spiritually intelligent people understand that no one is inherently evil. They're just hurt deep down and their hurt is uh, remedied by taking ugly outlets. As Thy said, a thatch. <laughs> These names. When another person makes you suffer, it's because he suffers deeply within himself. And his suffering is spilling over. He does not need punishment. He needs help. And it makes sense because a truly happy person can never want someone else to be unhappy. Facts. Number six, you're in awe of the universe. Some humans have egos so big that they tend to place themselves at the center of the universe, but not you. You're in awe of the universe. You look at the night sky and realize that you're not, you're nothing but a speck of dust on the galactic scale. You still feel small when you stand in front of the ocean. You realize that the universe is billions of years old and has endless light years of vastness. And your few decades of life is nothing in front of it. Oh, that's crazy because I think about that a lot. In essence, this all keeps you from being arrogant. And it serves as a reminder of how spiritually intelligent you truly are. Wow, y'all yeah, think about that all the time. Okay. Let's move on to last but not least, number seven. Your empathy, sadness exceeds self-sadness. This is one of the biggest signs of high spiritual intelligence because it's truly very hard to achieve. Empathy, sadness is when you suffer because you feel bad for others. And self-sadness is when you suffer for your own shortcomings in life. This achievement is only possible when you're so spiritually enlightened that your suffering in life starts to vanish into oblivion. Of course, all of it is never going to go away. but you keep getting closer to the minimum amount. And at the same time, you feel so at peace in life and you realize how good it can get that you wish it for everyone. And when you realize that other people don't have the peace you do, your empathy shoots up way more than your own residual sadness. Y'all, That was a good article 
in my opinion, it was a good read. Um, I hope y'all understand the stuff I'll be saying. When I read out loud now, I get nervous. I used to not be like this at all, but I stumble a lot. My tongue is tied and all that stuff. But that's okay because I can only get better if I continue to do it and try and all that stuff. So, anywho, I hope y'all understand the words that has been coming out of my mouth and it makes sense and all that stuff. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Please like this video if you have made it this far. Also, please go to my channel and check out more videos that I have posted on my channel. And thank you guys for watching and I will see you later. Bye-bye.